Hello everyone. I'd like to talk about this fixed fixed standing wave system. So this is a really common system uh, that's used as a model for standing waves. By far the most common example of it is a guitar string or a violin string. Some string that is vibrating between two fixed ends. Though a lot of waves are described by fixed fixed standing waves. So let's imagine a string of length L with fixed ends. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to figure out how does the wavelength of the standing wave that appears on that wave relate to the length of the string itself. And what we'll find out is that only certain wavelengths will be allowed to be standing waves on this string. And there are other wavelengths that just aren't allowed. Okay, so we've got our string between two fixed ends. And this is of length L. So what's the simplest standing wave that we can have? The simplest standing wave is the fundamental. It's the one that we draw that just looks like this, right? And when we draw a wave like this, remember what we mean is that a point on the string is oscillating up and down between these amplitudes. So here in the middle, it has a big amplitude. And on the edges, it has a very small amplitude, right? Okay, so for this, how does the length relate to the wavelength. Well, the length is equal to, the wavelength of the standing wave actually goes like this, right? That's the full wavelength of the standing wave. So this is actually lambda over two, which implies that the wavelength is equal to two L over one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write it somewhat evocatively like this so that hopefully we'll see a pattern emerge. So the next possible standing wave, or the next possible harmonic that can exist on this, is the one that goes up, down, up, and up, down, up. Well, why is this the next one? Well, one of the key things is that the ends of this string have to be fixed, right? So I can't have the string end, the w I can't have a wave that has the string like up here on the wall or down here on the wall. The boundary conditions of the fixed fixed standing wave mean that both ends have to be fixed. So what are the possible configurations that could be in there? Well, this is the next one. For this one, well, length is now just equal to lambda, which implies that lambda is equal to 2L over 2. Let's do one more so we can see the pattern emerge. The next possible wave has two nodes on it. So it's fixed at this end, goes down, up, down, Right, so it means that there are two places in the middle of the string where there is no oscillation, and that there are these three sort of antinodes. And the relationship between them is L, well, what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to one wavelength plus another half light wavelength. So this is three lambda over two, or lambda is equal to two L over three. So hopefully you've seen a pattern appear here. The pattern is, is that the allowed wavelengths are equal to 2L over N, where N is just some integer to describe the harmonic we're talking about. And N is equal to one, two, three, etc. And it just goes and goes and goes and goes. So this is important enough to have a box around it. We also know that the velocity is equal to F times lambda, the frequency times the wavelength. So we can actually recognize that the frequencies of these waves are also discretized, right? So just using this formula and plug it in here, I get that the frequency of a wave is equal to NV over 2L. And what we should notice is that when we set N equals to one, we just get V over 2L. So this is actually F1. So this is the fundamental frequency. And what we notice is that every harmonic or every other mode of the standing wave, the frequency of every other mode is just some integer multiple of that fundamental. So this is a key thing as well. And this is also an important enough equation to put a box around. So what these equations describe are the wavelengths of oscillations that are allowed, standing wave oscillations that are allowed on this string and the frequencies that are associated with those oscillations. And we notice that all of the fre possible frequencies are just multiples of the, 
the fundamental. So what I'd like to do is connect this sort of conceptual picture to the more mathematical one using the equation we have for standing waves. Remember, we have this equation that describes what a standing wave looks like, right? It describes the spatial aspect of it and the temporal aspect of it. So the spatial is like the nodes and antinodes, and the temporal aspect is just how a little piece of the string goes up and down. Well, imagine we have our string now. We know that in the middle, it goes up and down some amount, but at either end, it has to be fixed, right? That's the condition for a fixed fixed system. Because we're just interested in the spatial part, I'm actually gonna just sort of ignore this part of the equation for now. Because really this equation is just telling me how a specific point goes up and down. And I'm not really interested in that. What I'm interested in is finding out what are all the possible solutions of this equation that have the string fixed at one end and the string fixed at the other end. So how do we actually do that? One way is to explicitly say, well, this is x equals zero, zero, and this is x equal to l. And I know that d of x and t has to be equal to zero here, right? And d of x and t has to be zero at this side too. So this is what's called boundary conditions. So let's actually plug these boundary conditions in. I have d of x of t is equal to a sine k of x equals zero is equal to zero. And I have d of x of t is equal to a sine k times l is also equal to zero. Well, the, the first equation is very interesting. This says that sine of zero is equal to zero. Okay. The second equation is a little more interesting. The second equation says that sine of k times l is equal to zero. Let's take a closer look at this. Well, when is sine equal to zero? Well, sine is equal to zero when k times l is equal to some integer times pi, right? And is equal to one, two. It's true for zero too, but the zero case wasn't very interesting. Okay, so it's true for all these. So remember, sine's multivalued. So when sine is equal to zero, it means that KL must be equal to n times pi. Well, what is K equal to? Well, K is the wave number. And it's equal to wavelength times L times n pi, right? And what is this equal to? Well, if we solve for lambda, we see that this is actually just equal to 2L over N for N equals to 1, 2, 3, etc. And so we got the same equation we got before, right? And we can just substitute in the equation for the wave speed to get our related frequencies as well. But I think this is really important, right? We've arrived at the same idea the idea that the wavelengths of oscillations allowed on this string are quantized, right? Only certain ones are allowed. And we got to it at two ways. We got to it through this mathematical way, and we got through it through this sort of conceptual way of just thinking of the possible waves and looking for a pattern. So I think these are two really important ways of looking at the same idea.